Good morning, folks. We're starting with that tropical system from yesterday, which we said was getting shred. Let's continue our long-standing low-pressure quake discussion, though, as yesterday's big shake took place about a 9-iron away from that storm cell. We watched it happen again this morning, actually, with one of the tiniest but well-forced lows you can have on our planet briefly popping up in the West Pacific. It drew a convergence line over the Philippines, left an energetic weather disaster, and was beginning to affect seismicity overnight. Top story. Another in a string of nuclear frustrations. Water with radioactive tritium has spilled with the potential to seep into the groundwater. Officials are claiming it was a small, negligible amount and that we shouldn't worry. Okay. Anyway, back to the doomed storm. Remember he was being cannibalized and shred apart? This morning, it's only a rain event. Coming to Australia and New Zealand with the precipitable water overlay, showing the remnants of that Indian Ocean low. Up in Europe, we see a noteworthy low pressure cell to the north and in the eastern Mediterranean. Lightning will be the story down there with local warning checks necessary up north at that longer convergence going back out to sea. Folks, we're halfway through our climate extremes event this week here in the United States. Tornadoes, trains derailed by wind, severe hail, lightning. Moving eastward again tonight with the energetic discharges at the convergence of differing air masses, let's also not forget the cold aspect, bringing snow to punctuate these heat waves. Wow. We're also looking at those Pacific Earth spots, I mean, pressure cells. If this shifts north, Alaska will warm considerably, but if she goes straight east, let's eye the seismicity on the U.S. West Coast as well as the weather. First gamma ray burst in a couple of days. This came out this morning, well south in the sky. We updated the M-flare analysis last night. There's no danger or even a significant CME to track, and the flaring took a breather afterwards and is back building this morning. The sunspots are largely unchanged, with the exception of a slight spreading between the delta components at the time of the flare, which likely reduced the magnetic mixing and the flares momentarily. Southern incomers need some fruit or something. Wake up. Solar wind telemetry showing some elevated density readings sporadically over the last 24 hours with peaking speed this morning. Likely a coronal hole stream that is not hitting us directly. However, near-Earth energy is indeed in significant flux again today. Coronal hole power, left side faces Earth and the northern group is thinning and weakening a lot, but it's a matter of the coronal field blockage more than anything else. As the blue fields block the north, it loses its power, even as the South maintains tremendous force. Something to note, we get a lot of coronal hole questions. They're dark because the detector is looking for ions and doesn't see much in the corona there. It's because the fields are open and everything shoots away rather than curving back down in nice arcs. The central lights flashing are nano flares connecting at little tiny regions. Not all the fields open completely to interplanetary space. Do we all remember when Fox claimed that meant a piece of the sun had broken off? <laughs> remember, the corona is the solar atmosphere and down below that the surface of the sun is still alive and kicking even making those nano flare lights we saw moments ago. Current conditions and shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.